Hello? Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I think my, I had the phantom power button off. I think because I had to unplug my whole computer. So, there we go. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful night. So, today, I, um, yesterday I was supposed to do a Japanese lesson, but I was painfully tired. So I didn't do it, and I don't want to do those lessons outside of their scheduled Thursday time slot. So instead, I'm going to do something I haven't done before. I've been planning on making a fully animated sprite sheet for myself to hack into a Fire Emblem game at some point. And I can't have I can't hack myself into the game if I don't have an actual sprite. So I'm going to spend today just working on that, you know? I, um, I'm not very good at editing sprites, but... I, I've messed around with it before, so you can see here I have the first four frames of an animation prepped up. I um, it's based off of another edit from uh, or it's based off of another sprite sheet from Fire Emblem, but um, I'm moving stuff around in like the order of the animation so that it just the base is the same, but the way everything moves is going to be different. So you can see I got the color palette over here. I should probably make a separate like actual like color palette so that I, it's easier for me to take colors. I'm gonna do that right now. I don't do art a lot, so I don't know how to do, like, the things people normally do when it comes to doing art. Let's see. Usually, I, I see people, like, make, like, a box or something, like, let's see. Usually something that looks like this, no outline, solid color. Yeah, something like that. Just so it's easier for me to pick colors. I feel like I'm going to appreciate the fact that I did this later. So, there we go. There's my palette. Just go to each of the shades. I believe purple is four shades. Might be three. There we go. Got the wrong color. This is why having a palette to select from would be easier. I see now why people do this. I never really thought about it. Why can't I just pick the color from the uh, from the sprite itself? Oh, I see. It makes a lot of sense now. Um, I guess I only had three colors here. And then I had two colors for the cloak. So, the outside cloak are these two, and the skin, oh, the skin tone should be another set. How do I keep on missing this? Oh, that one I just right-clicked is why. Oopsies. You may be wondering, why are you editing sprites in MS Paint Elliot? My answer to you is because I know nothing else. I know that there are very good sprite programs available out there. I also know that I never learned how to use those programs, so... I'm too afraid to ask at this point, <laughs> so that's why I stick with the old reliable. I started editing sprites when I was in elementary school, sticking with uh, sticking with uh, MS Paint. So uh, that's all I know. I know like a sprite exists and like graphic scale exists and all that kind of stuff, but um, you know I don't, I never chose to learn how to use those programs because they were like. I heard about them at times where I wasn't, like, editing sprites, and every time I get back into the mood to do this kind of stuff, I'm like, but MS Paint exists. I can just use paint. And that's where, where, where we're at. And then the skin color is this. I think it's actually the same as the belt. The other thing is that I don't even know if these sprites will actually work in, um, in a Fire Emblem ROM hack. I don't know if I have the right, like, color palette, like... If I have the right, if I have too many colors being used in this, but I'm sure if that is the case, that I'd probably just be able to, uh, what's the word? Use some colors to replace other colors. Like I could probably make the outside cloak also the same as the colors the inside cloak, and that probably would save me some colors. I think it's a limitation on how many colors each individual sprite can have. Yeah, sometimes I think about like the days back when I was in like elementary school and like early middle school. I used to be like fascinated with reading like web comics and stuff and like editing and recoloring sprites. So, you know, that's how everyone made a sprite comic, you know? You just you take a sonic sprite, you go to paint, you find another character's palette, and suddenly you got yourself your own original Sonic the Hedgehog character. Is this actually the wrong color? I think I might have been the two the darkest and the lightest shade. Let's see. There we go, there we go. And then go. Wrong button. But what was my favorite sprite comic? 
Okay, that's a hard question. That's a loaded question. There were so many different sprite comic websites out there, and I feel like... I know, like, you have, like, the popular ones, like Bob and George. I think that was probably, like, the most prolific sprite comic. And you had, like, the one, like, the pig, the sprite comic with, like, Cyborg and the other Teen Titans. And that one, like, recolored Sonic character where he's like, Let's go hit those showers! But, um... I was very fun- Oh, yeah, 8-Bit Theater. 8-Bit Theater was also huge. How could I forget them? I remember, I always associate 8-Bit Theater with, like, the sprite animation- Or the flash animations that they made, like... Aeons ago. I didn't even realize that 8-Bit Theater was a sprite comic at that point. I just thought it was like a funny Flash animation on FlashPlayer.com and also Newgrounds.com. But then... I read, the, I read like part of the comic. I never actually finished 8-Bit Theater. So that's probably something that I could get back to doing. Um, but my favorite, there was a... There was a uh, sprite comic community called... Uh, let me write it out here. I always pronounce it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Dr. Schnapps, S-H-N-A-P-S. It was like a website where like a bunch of like different like people who wanted to like get into sprite comic making, like made a bunch of different like miscellaneous sprite comics. Looking back at it, I don't think a lot of the comics were probably good, but I had a fun time reading them. I have a lot of fond memories of like being on the forums as like a lurker. And like reading like their weird, silly crossover comics. Like they did a, there were a lot of series that were just like crossovers between like different like Nintendo IPs. Because you know when you're a kid making sprite comics, that's like the kind of thing that you make. Just yeah, Mario and Sonic and Mario and Sonic and Link and Pikachu and Kirby all doing dumb stuff. Like some kind of weird Nintendo Ed Ed Netty. And, and that's like what it felt like. And it was like I look back at it, and I was like. If I was just, like, a couple years older when I was reading these comics, I probably would have also just ended up making sprite comics alongside of them and, and just, like, adopted their sense of humor more than I did before. But yeah, it's, like, interesting. Like, sometimes I think about, like, internet communities a lot. Before, like, the most artistic thing that I used to do, like, back then was, uh, on internet forums, I would... I asked my parents if they could get me a copy of Photoshop because... I found out that you can make forum signatures in Photoshop, and I was like, forum signatures look cool. And so, a lot of my, like, the things that I had started learning to do with art at the beginning was just straight up, like, making forum signatures. That's it. <laughs> I was thinking about it today, like, I want to bring back forum signatures and weird, like, Photoshop editing with, like, brushes and stuff. I'm going to make myself a forum signature for Twitter. And I guess at that point, that's basically just, um... That's basically just a header at this point. Nowadays, that's what, uh, signatures have, like, devolved to. And people who, like, make, uh, banners are basically, like, the same people who made, like, forum signatures in the ye olden days of the internet. Right, so, we don't have the pauldrons, so we gotta take those off. And we don't have a sword, so we gotta edit that out. And my arm is not long enough to peek out of the coat yet. So, we're just gonna have... We're gonna save work by by being a magic person instead of a sword user. We save ourselves a little bit of time. The inner cloak. I feel like I fucked up with like the coloring here. I feel like the outer cloak should the inner cloak should have the like muted colors, and the inner cloak should have the brighter colors. But I was like sort of going off my color palette, like my actual design, and like the inside here is the same as the color as the actual clothes I wear. So I feel like that's sort of the train of thought I was going with this. I don't think it looks particularly bad either way. So let's just fill that little spot up. Actually, I think that should be the darker color. Get that. And then I think, yeah, that should be good. Do I want to color this? No, this was colored this way because of the way the sprite originally looked. But yeah, it's just, it was such a different time, you know? Like I find it so strange how like, that whole, like, hobby of mine, like, completely went out the drain once, like, Twitter and Tumblr started being, like, the main places people went to for, like, talking to people. Like, on Tumblr, you didn't have forum signatures. Actually, forum signatures were, like, pretty memed here at that time. At that point, people were, like, just, like... Every now and then, there's always a Twitter thread talking about how, like, people had those really edgy forum signatures of, like, Sephiroth, or, like, Kingdom Hearts 2 characters. And, like... 
yeah, it is funny, but also it's just like, I miss making those. I remember I still have like a good majority of my old forum signatures saved onto an, a hard drive. Like every time I've gotten a new computer, I have a uh, folder titled like um, 2012 stuff, 2015 stuff, like lining up with when I got a new computer. And sometimes I'll look back at 2009 stuff and just see the old stuff that I used to have, like, save, like, all the old forum signatures and stuff. I used to make a lot of, like, I used to be very big into the Tail series. I guess I still am into the Tail series, but, like, wait, let me just see one sec. Did I mess up the positioning here? I used to be into the Tail series, so I, like, had a lot of, like, Tales of signatures. I used to be a part of some Sonic fan forums. Like, I wasn't even that big into Sonic, but, uh, they kind of just, I kind of just ended up making a lot of signatures. I made, a, I made a lot of signatures for people who had, like, original characters. So that's a really cursed part of that folder, is just the, uh, from the old Sonic forum that I went to. Alright, that's what that's supposed to look like. So we gotta place this head in the right position. Let me just clear this out. And then... we select that again. Uh, so it looks like that. Why is there, like... I'm pretty sure that one didn't have any transparency, please. <laughs> Excuse me. Sometimes MS Paint likes to be fickle a little bit. That's okay. There we go. So the front of my head is the same there. Alright, yeah, and that looks fine, I'm pretty sure. It looks like I had a cool cloak. I actually never saw myself from the back until, um... Seer, Seer and drew me on Twitter the other day. So I never really thought what the back of my character looked like. I had some ideas. I always thought that like, you know, my cloak like extended like the back part. But then I realized that it would make more sense that if there was like a secondary cloak line like back here as well, as opposed to like the cloak starting at the front and sort of connecting into a long cape. But that's like sort of what I thought it was at first. I don't know why I never asked any of the designers that I worked with when I was brainstorming this. It's like things I don't think about until like I have to draw myself at different angles. And I think every artist that I've had I've commissioned like with Skeb or like just asked from other people, I think they've all drawn me in like different ways. I should probably get a ref sheet. <laughs> Maybe one day. One day I will have an actual proper reference. Alright, so here. Fill in the toes. There's a way to like mass recolor things, but like with how many, like, minor edits that I have to make to these, I feel like it would be playing a very dangerous game if I, like, mass recolored the entire sprite sheet first. There we go, and then fully dark purple here. Let's go plop these colors in. There we go. Boop, boop. And it's looking more like me. I think the, like, the craziest part is, like, as I do more of these edit, like, as I edit each sprite, Watching it transform into, like, Elliewood Fire Emblem into something that looks like me, it's just so strange. Like, I can see, I can tell that that is my character. That is, not my character, that is it's me. That's Elliot. So we had to let the cloak fall down. So essentially what I have here, so, like, the spellcasting animation is me, like, dodging backwards with my arm outstretched. And as, like, as the cloak falls back, that's how, like, that's when the magic is going to come up. So, usually a lot of times in Fire Emblem, they usually have, like, flowy cloak animation, so, like... Usually, like, my hand would be outstretched here, and then I think it would be, like... This frame up to, like... This frame would loop so that it would look like the cloak is constantly flowing. But, um... I don't know how to loop animations like that properly, so it's gonna just be, like... As I'm standing here with my arm outstretched, the whole spell cast animation will just go off. That's what I'm planning on doing. And that's just gonna be the normal cast animation. And then I have, like, a return back to the forward facing. So what I want to do is I want to at least get this all done. So once I get this all done, I'll probably start working on the crit animation. But off stream, I'm going to try to see if I could hack in just the regular spellcast animation. Because, I don't know, I like the fact that I have a uh, Fire Emblem talk portrait. Let me see if I can copy that into paint so you guys can see it up close. Because I've, like, show showcased it before, but, like... I'm just so amazed that something like this exists. Oh, hey, Tidal, what's up? Good to see you here. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh... 
I can really only do edits, but like I'm really it, it's so satisfying to see that it like comes out looking like similar to me in any capacity. But um, let me see if I can open this. Let me see copy. I um I commissioned someone on Reddit who was like doing a lot of Fire Emblem sprite portrait edits, and you can see they I had I commissioned them to make myself here. You can see they got like. It looks so, like, authentic to the game because a lot of this was edited off of, um, one of the characters from Fire Emblem 6. So you can see, like, it's got, like, the cravat with my, like, lapel in the middle there, or the, uh, the brooch. And it's got, like, the, the like, the blazer cloak looking thing. It's, they, like, captured me so well. And I love use like, making, like, edits of, like, the Fire Emblem 8 ROM to include my character, to my include myself in it. And I like being able to, like, I like that when I show battle scenes that it, to see myself, like, last time I did an edit, I just, like, put a purple color palette on a sage sprite. But the sage isn't me. The sage doesn't wear pants. The sage wears, like, an open dress, open leg skirt kind of thing. And don't get me wrong, I look hot in that, but, like, I also want it to look like me. I want it to be distinguishable that Elliot Ambers is in Fire Emblem. <laughs> so, let's continue with this. Yeah. Gotta clear out. The, the hardest part here, I feel, is editing out the pauldrons and making it still look like a sensible shape. But it's not too big of a deal. I still think this looks fine. Like, it's sort of like molding to the shape of my back. I think maybe I could shade it better. Like, like the stream title says, I don't fully understand how shading works. I know that, like, the sun comes from up here. And, like, you know, sunbeams come like that. So, like, the top should be lighter and anything that would be below it should get a little darkened. So... Like, this might make a little bit more sense, because the top here, it's like sort of like curving along my back, so part of it would be more shaded. But then like here, like this would be like the part that's like up in the air the most, and like the cloak is curving around here. I don't really understand shading at all, and it's probably been like the biggest wall for me to understand. <laughs> get a sheet and use a lamp for an- <laughs> Just get- just have like a fan blowing on the sheet, and just have it like just flowing. Like, take, like, a bunch of pictures to see, like, oh, yeah, 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 that's the, that's the ticket, that's the lighting. But, like, it's just such a hard concept for me to grapple with. It's, like, I know they say, like, to get better at art, you have to keep on doing it. No, I, I don't think it's a joke at all. It, it makes sense, but it's also, like, just the idea of doing it just sounds funny, despite the fact that it is legitimately helpful. Like, like, when you're, like, trying to draw, like, funny art and you have to like pose yourself in the reference for it. Like you think about all like the reference poses that you take and like the poses that you're in like as yourself. And it just it just looks so silly, but like it also is like genuinely helpful. You know, the things that we got to go through to do art. I should do my art reps more frequently. I should practice art more than I do. Cuz like, you know, I say that I want to get better at doing art, but like there's just so many things that I like doing. Yeah, yeah, I always wanted to get, like, a mannequin, too. I, like, try to find, like, online versions of them. But I can't find one that, like, works really well. And I guess, like, having, like, the full, like, an official, like, one in front of you is probably more efficient anyway in the long run. Alright, let's see. So we want to have the cloak. The cloak is starting to, uh, shape around, like, the back fully. So let's do, like, this. Let's do it, like, something like this, I think. And then my arm is back into frame. How does that go? So like this, I think. It's a pauldron. We're gonna just color this in light purple. So the shape of the cloak should be something like this, I believe. Yeah, I think this makes sense. And then we just gotta shade it. Those little magnetic twists or whatever look you Is it like a model kind of thing? I think about magnetics. I think about like those weird like they were like um they're like these sticks. And then like they had like these little orbs. So like you could connect the orbs to them and then they would connect to like another magnetic stick. I think they were like called magnetrics or something. I remember when I was a kid, I really wanted a set of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had I had one of those, except I had only a small set, so I could only do so much with them. I only had like 24 sticks and a couple of balls. So I couldn't make a lot of shapes with them, but I had fun making the same shapes that I always made. 
I always made like the pyramid and like the hexagon shape. Oh, those were fun to mess around with. Now that I'm an adult, I can get like a big set of those. I can get a set of like a hundred sticks and make like big shape. But that sounds like something fun to do. I also like made swords with them a lot for some reason, like a two-dimensional like it looked like a... Uh... It's so, like the magnet would look like this, and I would be like a triangle here. And then they would just be like alternating triangles. And then I like swing it, and then it would just explode on impact. <laughs> but you know, I was like a I was a young kid and I thought swords were cool. I still think swords are cool, because you know. Things like that just don't change. You just think swords are cool permanently. Oh wait, I think I don't like how this looks. I'm going to. Let's make this a little lower. Something like this. And so I think the arm still wouldn't be visible. But like that, and then something like that, I think, makes a little bit more sense. Or maybe like this. Yeah, 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 that, that looks a little bit better, I think. <laughs> I have such a bad eye for this. The expensive big boy magnetic people are called sticky bones. Sticky bones? Oh, yeah, yeah, for posing, for posing. Yeah, I, um... I need to look into those because I feel like, I mean, in general, I think everyone like who tries to do art, like it's just such a helpful tool to like have something posable like that in front of you. But um, yeah, I think it would help me a lot because I can't find very good resources to do like something like that online. And usually they're pretty unwieldy as well. So like <laughs> I find one and it just is like really awkward to use. Ah, that's too much. That's too much purple. I like that this entire sprite edit is just a uh, Ellie would but purple. What if it was purple? All right, let's edit out the sword as well. Wait, let me get the green so that it just cleans out to the background. And then we do this, clear these little guys out. And then we have to make a hand. Making the hand sprite has been like such a nightmare. I don't understand how anatomy works. <laughs> so you can see like I have the hand over here. <laughs> Let's see. So then I did this. I feel like the arm should more or less be in the same position though. Let me cut and paste this for reference. This might help actually help <laughs> making sure that I have the right thing set up. Yeah, it's mostly the same. So I can Actually, probably just do this. I love being able to fucking copy and paste, boys. This is e art shit so easy. Oops. Uh, what? Oh god, I messed everything up. I fucked everything up. <laughs> uh, let's do this. And now we have a transparent selection. There we go. It's gonna be obscured by the cloak still, so we're gonna need to cut a little bit of this off. And we cut a little bit of this off, I think. And I think we can select this now, and that should give us... We can see that it is about... One pixel off the bottom we gotta take out, at the very least. But I'm so good at this. <laughs> okay, and then... Cloak is still covering some of the bottom left part of the hand. This is probably like a not particularly efficient way to do it, but anything to avoid me having to redraw things again. Yeah, something like that we can delete and then delete a little bit off of this. This won't be visible. Looks like that whole a large part of this here. Yeah, just that last pixel. We can clear this out, and look at that. His arm is now obscured. In the same size that it was before. But his arm's not getting any lower in this pose. He's just holding his arm out while the uh, the cloak falls down. So we, it's better to just stay consistent with the same sprite. Something looks wrong here. Something still does look wrong. Let's just 
make sure I did this right. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We just need to put this over here. Maybe that'll help make it look a little bit more in place. There we go. And then I have to give me the right head. But I think the head also being wrong is throwing me off a little bit. Right. Um, let's absorb this color. Shloop. Warp that color up. Oh, right. I can't just take the whole thing. Working with background colors is hard. Right. So, let's also delete. Hey, Action Productions. What's up? I hope you're having a good day. Right now, we're just doing some sprite edits right now. You know, I played a lot of ROM hacks, so of course I want to see myself in a Fire Emblem game. <laughs> it's alright. It's good to see you here, though. I hope you're having a good one. I hope your day is going well. Just need to figure out why the transparent's not cutting properly. Let's see. That's so strange. That's good to hear. Um, pull that out. There we go. There's my head. Nice, nice. We just need to color in the rest of the pants now. So then we get this over here. And then the shoes. Elliot shoes, Elliot shoes. Painting in the toes. It's like kind of like cathartic to do stuff like this, you know? Even if I'm like just very... I'm, even if I'm just more or less doing a glorified recolor, it's just watching each frame go, like, eventually become me. Feels really nice, and it's just so like... I guess because I'm not good at it, I can't tell when I'm doing poorly. <laughs> you know, it's that sort of like ignorance, you know? Like, people who are, like, really good at art, I'm pretty sure, like, get more stressed out when they're, like, doing, like, art sometimes because, like, they gotta make things come out perfectly. Or, like, they know when things look bad, so, like, they know how to edit it properly. But me? I'm kind of just going ham right now. And if it looks bad, then I'll figure out that it looks bad. <laughs> Thank you, Kenrico, and good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's just... I guess part of it's just... I never know what I'm doing, so I can't tell if what I'm doing is right. But I'm glad you think it looks good. <laughs> or that I'm doing well, at least. Alright, so we need two more frames here. Let's just fill these out. Something looks off about the shading here. I think... I think this should be, um... Color that in. And I think the shading could be a little wider, maybe. Because before it was, like, kind of, like, pinched because of the pauldrons. But because the pauldrons aren't... There, I think maybe it could be like a little bit. There, it's like less constricted, so it's like flowing more openly. I think this looks a little better. God, I just don't understand shading. <laughs> uh... It's alright. When I see it in motion, I'll be able to tell like what pixels look off. But I was trying to become a sorcerer. Kinda. There I am. And I'm trying to just give myself a cool little battle animation so I can hack myself in. One thing that I want to eventually do, like, I want to, like, play through, uh... I want to replay through maybe, like, Hector Hard Mode or something, or maybe, like, Fire Emblem 6, or replace myself with one of the lords, or one of the lords with myself. It would be an interesting concept because, again, I'm, like, a mage, I'm, like, a mage, you know? And none of the GBA games have actual, like, magic lords. So it would be interesting to see, like, how it changes things. Like, how would Hector hard mode be changed if I was Hector? Would I die in the first chapter? Probably not, because I have 1-2 range, and I guess Hector has 1-2 range too, but everything dies to magic early on in Fire Emblem. But then Hector hard mode also has, like, a fuck ton of Pegasus Knights, so I might just get hard countered if I don't- <laughs> If I don't mod myself, um, Air Calibre or something as a proof weapon. 
That might actually have to be the like the proficiency weapon, just air caliber to like kill flyers in Hector Hard Mode. Like instead of like the Wolf Bale or Rapier, those would be overkill on most things that it kills. Cause like all the Lord's proficiency weapons in Fire Emblem are just effective against cavalry and knights. But if I'm a magic lord, those units already have bad res, so it would be overkill to be effective against them. Though I guess I mean you think about Makaya and Radiant Dawn and she was she needed Thanny to do stuff because she couldn't double anything. <laughs> so I think it might be an inter I think it would be like such a cool concept, like especially me being a VTuber, me being virtual. What better way to like incorporate the the way that I play Fire Emblem but to put myself in a game, right? And it would be just like a little bit like it wouldn't be a major twist to the game, but like changing like one of your fundamental like important like priority characters into a different unit altogether, I think has like a really cool potential for for it. I don't think I've really seen people like slot in themselves into the game. Though I did see recently that uh Mecha is doing a playthrough of Fire Emblem 6, but Lin is in it. So it's a similar idea where like you just mod in a different character. And I think it's just such a neat idea, you know? I feel like it would also be like, oh, if there were like other pixel artists who like did uh, sprite edits, if they um if they also like modded in their own like portrait and like came in as like recruits or like as boss characters, <laughs> oh that would be such a cool idea for like a collab. Like every like cause I was I got this idea from like watching Mecha do like his PvP uh Fire Emblem where he 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 plays his team and then like someone else controls the enemy units. Well like imagine like someone like modding themselves as a class and then like me putting them into the ROM as like a boss character and like making them stronger than the normal boss was. That would be so cool. And like having them like voice themselves. <laughs> oh man, that's such a cool idea. Man, I'm so smart. Uh, I might have to get. I might have to find people who are into Fire Emblem, and would want to be in the, like some kind of project like that. <laughs> um, and then this pauldron here. I think we're gonna end it here, and then I think. Let me just get the arm again. We don't actually have to edit much off the arm this time. I think more of it's gonna be shaded. I'm glad you think it's such a hype concept. I'm like excited to do something like that. A friend of mine, before he disappeared for a while, asked me to do a collab with him on something Fire Emblem related, and I wanted to do something, but I couldn't think of, like, anything. The PvP series came to mind, but also, like, it's hard to think of, like, how much else you could do with that, like, for a long-running series. But I think something like that would be really cool. Like, to do that PvP concept, but also the, uh, the VTuber has themselves as a controllable character. I think that'd be super neat. And I know a bunch of people who like do like Fire Emblem, but a lot of people like don't want to stream Fire Emblem because I absolutely don't blame them, it's Fire Emblem. <laughs> like I feel like it's hard to sit through unless like you're doing some kind of challenge run usually. Or like if it's a blind play through or something, it, it's also pretty cool, but like I feel like a lot of the times people like will avoid playing Fire Emblem. I just like the game a lot, so it just is comfortable to me. I think actually we could delete this and then we can make this a black and then we can make this. Yeah. There we go. And then I'm gonna erase this. So we erase this out of the way. And then where's my arm? The arm is on the sprite here. So we can copy and paste this. What? What? You want to click the wrong thing? All right. So then this gets pasted over here. There's not anything. Oh wait, here. Something like this. I should copy and paste a little bit more just so I can get a better idea on how to reattach everything surgically. <laughs> Yeah, once I um once I finish, I have like a lot of Fire Emblem and other strategy RPGs I want to play through. Godot has multiplayer now, but I haven't learned to. Oh, I don't even think I need to like mod a game or anything. There's um there's a mod that uh 
if you um have FE Builder, you can like very easily change like the ROM itself to like replace characters and portraits. That's what I did to make a couple of shit posts on Twitter. <laughs> but you can like just completely like slot in bosses for new characters. And I would um I would do that and I would find the mod that Mecha uses to uh do PvP and just like have other VTubers like be the boss characters of a map. Like just replacing uh yeah, like replacing the like so it's like I'm playing through Fire Emblem Seven, but like not exactly through Fire Emblem Seven. Okay, let's put this back where it belongs, and then fill this in properly, and then we can just troop that over, and then it's supposed to look like this. So we gotta delete a couple of rows below. Just to make sure that I have everything properly cleared. I don't even know what I'm- I feel like I'm doing something- bleh. That's not great. Let's do this. Okay. Holes, holes, holes. I really should just be using like a sprite or something. Even Photoshop with layers. But like, I feel like I avoid Photoshop because... Um... I feel like it just chugs. Like, when I want to do sprites, I want to be, like, working fast, but I feel like Photoshop is just such a slow program. I think, actually, I... Yeah, I have the full hand, actually. This is fine. Next, yeah, how the stats, in your opinion, are calculated? Um, so, for myself, I'm gonna, like... Obviously, if I'm gonna, like, mod myself to do a challenge on a Fire Emblem, I'm probably going to base my stats around the character that I'm replacing. So, like, if I'm replacing, like, myself, I'm, like, replacing one of the main characters, I'm gonna rearrange the stats so that, like, I have, like, the same numbers in each- or I have, like, the same growth rates, but, like, in certain stats swapped around. Like, for example, Hector has, like, 60, I think it's, like, 55 attack growth and, like, 40 speed growth, I think, like, 40 or 45 skill growth. So I would have those same numbers, but rearrange them in stats that, like, fit my character better. Like, obviously, I wouldn't have high defense growth as a mage, so that, that would probably, like, swap around with something like speed, or, like, luck or something. And then for the people that I would have, like, guests being guests on the stream, it would also be, like, their stats would be swapped around based on the boss that they're replacing, except be a little higher. So, you know, just to make it, like, fair, but also, like, giving them, like, some kind of a... An advantage. Oh, this was the sprite that I was trying to replace. Everything makes sense now. I was editing the wrong thing. There we go. I was editing a sprite that I already edited a while ago. Let's see. So it should be like this. Yes. My arm looks short in this pose. Let's see how it looks this way. Yeah, something looks off here. I think it's because it looks like I have like it connecting a little higher up there. I think maybe I should wait. No, that's normal though. I think. No, it's not. Let's let's see. I think the distance is further. Yeah, if I copy and paste this, put my head there. No, that's the same. I think it might just be another case of the way the cloak looks right now with my head not there. Let's see if it looks a little bit more properly spaced when I put my head here. There we go. And then we're going to color up here. And then I feel like this can go. Yeah. Oh, welcome, Bimo. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you for the raid. I hope you had a good stream. What were you guys up to? I am currently editing a sprite. I'm currently trying to edit a sprite so that I can mod myself into games. <laughs> I hope your stream went well though. Let me just color this in. And then get our shoes done. That's not shoes. Color these in. this. Plop those over there. Hey, Bimo, I hope you're doing well. 
Every stream went well. Let's plop these over here. What were you guys up to? What were you doing on your on your stream? <laughs> Alright, so we got this. Now we just have one more for the drop cloak. So I think what it's gonna be, I don't know actually how to import sprite animations properly into FE Builder. But my plan is like, so these are the sprite and these are the motion sprites, so the flip back and then the cloak falls. And I think what it's supposed to be. Oh, you were playing a spooky game, but you weren't feeling it. I feel that though. Like sometimes when you like start a stream and you're not feeling like what it is that you're streaming, sometimes you just gotta call it, you know? Cause, you know, just it's not the vibe. And when the vibe is off, people know when the vibe is off. Sometimes you just sometimes the game just hits you with like a vibe check. And you're just like, well, yeah. I I didn't need to experience that anyway. There we go. We can paste that in there. Funny enough, because like I know a lot of people during like this month are definitely going to be playing more spooky games. So I was like mulling around with the idea because Wisteria and I, we play a lot of spooky games normally. <laughs> so as a gag for this month, instead of playing spooky games, we're just going to play Kirby, you know? Nice, unassuming, friendly ball, friend shape, Kirby, two player game, fun co-op. That's what we're gonna do this month. I think we're probably gonna play, I'm trying to think what which Kirby game I wanna do, but I was thinking either Superstar or Amazing Mirror. One of like the easier like co-op games to emulate. So I think with uh, Amazing Mirror, it's co-op, but like you have to figure out like how to get no cash GBA running on one system. And it probably is simple, but I just have to make sure I know how to do it. But what spooky game were you playing? Was it like a, was it, like one of those spooky indie games or was it like a like an official game like Silent Hill or something like a, an official like release license title oh yeah that's understandable sometimes you know sometimes you just have to like you just get into a weird mindset like it's just like not the proper mood to enjoy like the spooky me I don't have any I don't ever have the right mindset to enjoy spooky I just get thrown into it <laughs> it just happens Oh, by Yahtzee! I've been meaning to check out his games. Like, I know he's made, uh... What is it? The, the Chizo Mythos, I think is what it was called? I heard, like, that was, like, a really, like, popular, like, series. Kirby, a nice franchise with terrifying... <laughs> and one of the sad monsters. There are... Yeah. That's the joke. <laughs> that's the joke. Because, you know... Kirby is such an unassuming, like, lovable, happy Poyo protagonist. And then... And then you fight like O2 in C Crystal Shards, and he's just like, oh, that's scary. I didn't like that. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, Kirby is like both fitting and contrasting with what a lot of people will be doing over the, uh, for this whole month. And I think it's a pretty fun choice to pick. Also, it's just a nice change. Yeah, I, um... I've, like, heard nothing but, like, critical praise for uh, the Mythos. So it's, like, been one of those things that I've been meaning to check out. But it's just, like, always, like, I never really get around to doing a lot of things that I say I should get around to doing. Oh, it's a roguelike in the same universe. Oh, okay. So it's a, a spooky roguelike. That's always fun. Like, you know, like, the whole, like, procedural generation, but with horror. I feel like it's such a good concept. I know that there's a couple games that do that. I think Lost in Vivo is another game that does that, where it's like a roguelite shooter with like horror elements to it. And I think it just makes sense because like, if a game is constantly changing, it's constantly like being randomized, you can never tell when you're gonna get scared. Other games like, you know, you play a scary game once, you know where all the jump scares are, where the surprises are. But when random generation is thrown into the mix, it's over, you're done. Say hello to the, the scary things that you don't know are going to come. And it doesn't even have to be jump scares with roguelites, because it could be like... Atmospheric horror can really get you when you don't know when it's coming. And if it's procedurally generated, then you'll really never know when it's coming. Differently Morphous. Huh. Yahtzee sure does a lot. I guess it makes sense. He's such a critic that it, it makes sense that he would probably also delve into, like, the medium himself 
and like try his hand at doing that kind of stuff. You know, it's always like people always throw out that whole like, oh, you can't criticize it. You haven't tried making a game first, and then like he just goes and makes his own games that like people love. <laughs> Kirby's one of your favorite franchise. Oh, yeah! Oh, the 3D Kirby game looks super cool. I'm also very excited for it. It's been so long. I think the last Kirby game I played was Star Allies with my friends. And let me tell you, Star Allies is one of the, my favorite uh, co-op Kirby experiences, if only because of the way the final boss sequence works. Because the final boss sequence in Star Allies is, like, super cool on its own. But when you have a bunch of friends who are drunkenly screaming in a college dorm at, like, fucking... Nine, like we just got the game that day, and we're just playing through it. It's so cool to do like all like the co-op quick time events to like power your like, to, like make the uh, the team attacks more powerful. It's just such a cool, like the presentation of it was really nice. All right, let me copy this. I want to copy the cloak, but without the arm part, because then. Do that we can repaste the arm with the cloak over the arm so I don't have to do anything tricky is this cheating I think it's just art I think that's just how art is I don't understand it particularly but uh sometimes you just got to do these things and hope they work hope they make sense <laughs> so we'll fill these in like, another thing about, like, doing art and, like, wanting to do more art is that there's so many things I want to do. I've been doing, like, a lot of singing practice. And, like, I've wanted to, like, learn, like, the ukulele more and, like, the guitar more and practice my trombone more. Like, I want to do, like, a lot more instrumental stuff, but, like, <laughs> between everything that I want to do, it's so hard to find time for everything. Like, along with, like, also teaching as well. <laughs> One thing I didn't like about the recent direct was the fact that they tease Astral Chain. You didn't like it. You are excited for Bayonetta 3 just not playing the first two, but they shouldn't have done it. Wait, what? I mean, Bayonetta 1 and 2 are on the Switch at least, so like if you want to experience it, you still have time to. Because it'll probably be a while before Bayonetta 3 comes out. Wait, let me see something real quick. Oh man, this is so cool. Like, just realizing now, it's like, it, it's just hitting me that, like, I have this fully animated now. I don't think I have anything to, uh... Animate this in, though. Is he's- oh! Oh, yeah, teasing a new Astrid, that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Bayonetta fans had to wait, like, what, five years, six years for Bayonetta 3 news to be officially announced? I feel like Astral Chain's still a relatively new game. I think it's nice that they have a teaser after not even that much time. I still haven't tried Astral Chain either. I remember like that and Damon X Mach, you know, were like two like big titles that like got teased for a while. But I feel like I didn't hear a lot of people talk about it after the first week that the game was out. All right. So what we need to do now? We have this post here, but then we need to get standing. We need the sprite that gets us standing back here, and I think I want to use this, these sprites here. I don't know if it makes sense though, because this is from a back. I look like Robin even now. <laughs> I I would honestly, I was very inspired by um, what is it by f Fire Emblem in my design, and I guess it shows. <laughs> I could use this. Like I feel like it might be like too fast of a transition. For the attack, it makes sense to, like, flip back with that, like, fast animation that they use for the dodge. I think I could use this. Yeah, I think this should be fine. So we have the, the whole thing here, and then we're gonna grab this color, and we're gonna make more of a box here. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> And then it'll turn back into that. And maybe I'll animate it in Photoshop. To see, like, maybe I'll, like, make a mock-up photo. A mock-up, uh, for this to see, like, how it would animate on, like, Fire Emblem backgrounds. Oh, that's so cool. 
art is fascinating, dude. When you finish working on something and it like looks like a thing that you wanted it to look like. I've actually never understood the feeling. Maybe I should do more art so I can understand the feeling. I love Astro Chain. The fact that he's a second game makes me salty because again, they shouldn't tease a game while sharing. Oh wait, I, I remember what you mean. I think they like they teased that they like referenced it during the Bayonetta trailer, right? I think that's what you're referencing too. I think it's a nice nod though. I think Platinum worked on both games, so it makes sense that they're getting referenced there. Is it the same sprite? Yes, it is the same sprite. I can just do this. Aha! Copy and paste means that I can just do this, and that is the whole sprite sheet. So we have attack. Thankfully for magic units, all we need is just the, um... Yeah, I'd imagine the more you do art, the more frustrating it'll get, like when you're trying to get something perfect. There we go. Oh wait, uh, something was... This here. That's the color that we need there. Fill in the cravat. There we go. Well, why tease it? I mean, just, I think it's nice to have just a reference, like a nod to know that like, yeah, we still remember the game. You'll eat salt if you have to. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do, my plan for the crit animation. So Ellie Wood's crit animation has this thing where he like lifts the sword upwards. Like he gets that and then like the spark, the shine comes. I think... Am I Robin themselves? No, I am not. Maybe I might be... I might be familiar to you as Robin. You know, like how Lin remembers Robin as Mark because they're the tactician. I am just a simple strategist. And I just see my best on the battlefield, you know? Just like Robin, you know? Sometimes I can just see the lines of battle, and then I get people dead, and then I hit reset. <laughs> but yeah, I want to do... My plan for the animation is to have him, like, lift his arm up. So I might make the arm, like, have the hand be closer to the chest, like, sort of like he's, like, praying. <laughs> and then, so his hand's going to be on his heart. And then we do the wave back. Like that. So it ends up in the same, same position. And then the rest of the sprites would just be the magic cast. So, like, once it goes down to here. So essentially the sprites that we would be animating would be... What is it? Uh, where I lost my place. What? So here. It would end here. And it would be like here. So it's not a lot of sprites. Oh, you were just doing something <laughs> That's understandable. I think I played it along decently enough, you know? All the strategists in the Fire Emblem universe are actually the same. That's why, uh, that's why Lin recognizes Robin as a familiar face when you get her in the spot pass. So yeah. It's the, uh, we get the, like, the hand, like, sigh. And then raise up the arm, wave back, and then the magic just, like, slams them. I was thinking about having a forward thrust, but I don't have enough art skill to show the forward thrust without it like looking kind of like awkward we would have like the forward thrust like i was thinking like maybe like he pushes forward but i don't know how to do that with like him standing still i wasn't sure how to like express that i think just having the hand in the back pose should be good enough so what i'm gonna try to do Let's see. Actually, be right back. I need to take an idle break. I will be back in about a couple of seconds. Wait, what do I have? What was that there? Anyways, I'm gonna take a quick idle break. Be right back.
Ah. No, you're not too late, Siren. I'm back, I'm back. Uh, I just had to, uh... <laughs> I had to step out for a second. But good to see you here, Siren, if you're still here. <laughs> oh, and if you're here, well, I'll see if you get a response before I immediately... Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, so here's the progress we've made so far, Seer. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So currently, we have the standing sprite here, and this is supposed to be like my spellcasting animation, so I take the step back. You can see the arm is outstretched and the cloak falls down. And this, it's going to linger on this, just the fallen cloak, while like the spell animation goes on. You Sorry, you ended up not sleeping at all yesterday? Aww. Well, make sure you get some good rest later tonight then, alright? You know, it's important to rest. I got- I went from getting my normal four and a half hours of sleep last night to getting a nice six hours of sleep. Still not optimal, but it felt good. Did you get my message about how you did your Robin? I didn't make each one of them, no. So if you take a look, um... If you take a look here, you can see it's actually modeled off of this line here. So you can see if I just copy and paste, you'll see like how the edit looks. And did I get my your message? I think about Robin descendants being Mark and Chris. I mean kinda, yeah. I guess I could see like when you look at like characters with similar names and like the Japanese names and stuff. I guess that makes sense. But yeah, here's a relation. So I edited these. So you could see there's a couple of small edits here, like there's no sword there. Um, the pauldrons are gone there, so there's no shoulder. I could probably show the pointer. Yeah, you could see... So, like, Elliewood has those shoulder pads that I edited out. <laughs> Did I edit on paint? Well, Seer, what you have to know is that I... I don't do a lot of art, but, um... I... When I was young, when I was a kid, I did a lot of sprite editing in MS Paint. And the only other program that I use is um, Photoshop, and Photoshop is not great for sprite editing. <laughs> so I've just been using the tool that I've been most comfortable with. I know that there's like great tools out there like Graphic Scale and um, A Sprite and everything like that, like other like programs that are made for like doing pixel art. But I just never learned how to use them or downloaded them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, that's that's what I meant as well. That, like, the Descendants of Robin. It would make sense that if, like, you were to think of all of the Fire Emblem games in a similar universe, that the Tacticians are all... That the Tacticians are all, um... Related. That's some serious... Not <laughs> skill and... It is a lot of patience. And, um, I think streaming this helped me a lot. Just being able to talk while doing this and just getting this done. At the start... And yeah, the mouse, that was actually done by Seer. You did a great job making that pointer. I love using it. I love just being able to like turn it on and just, woo. You can see it even has like the little, uh, it has the little um brooch that I have on my cravat. I think that that was such a good touch. If you like zoom into it, you can see it kind of like looks like the monocle and that at the same time. Yes, I'm going to do a GIF of it and I'm going to animate it so that, um, I'm going to upload it to Twitter so, like, you can see what it would look like in the actual game. This is, like, kind of like a tactician. Like, Marth listens to him a lot. But yeah, I want to, um... I don't know if you two were here, uh, Action and uh, Seer, but what I'm going to do with this, when I'm done making the full sheet, I'm going to hack myself into a Fire Emblem game, and I'm going to play that with m myself as the main character. <laughs> I'm going to replace the main character with myself. I think he was talking about, um, I think Seer was talking about the, uh, the pen being cool. Or the mouse pointer being the feather pen. Just acknowledging that that's what it was. <laughs> Alright, so that's the normal attack animation. This is going to be the critical animation that I use. So, you could see, in this animation, he raises his sword upwards. So, instead of raising, like, to chin length, I'm going to have the arm actually go up to here probably at this point here like a hand on your heart kind of thing and then I am going to have him do like the hand raise up in the air and then the swing back and then it's going to play out the rest of the animation 
I think it's really neat. Oh, and change dimension. All right. Give me a second here. Do I have BSF here? Let me add that as a source. Add source. Media source. Not media source. Window capture. Oh, you're right. This could make for a fun uh, alert. I should do that. That's a good idea. I've been thinking about getting alerts because I don't, <laughs> I don't actually have one, like proper alerts. It's just, it just this text at this point. It's really nice music. Thank you. I think I chose good music for, <laughs> for my uh, chatting streams, my non-gaming streams. Where's VSF? It should be near the bottom. There we go. Now let me give me a second here. Uh, where did I put this? Let you make. If you want, you can make one, but I didn't want to, like, pressure you or, like... At least let me pay you, though. <laughs> You've done so much for me that I don't think it would be... I would feel happy just not letting you have any sort of compensation. <laughs> but if you want to make one for me, that would be more than willing to commission you for one. It would be nice, you know, like... Because now, as it is, like, I don't have anything that, like, pops up. It's just the text. <laughs> like, having some kind of cute image there. Like, even, like, the sprite or, like, anything there. Oh, I do have that image you drew for me, like, so long ago. I have that, um... I could pull it up, actually. Oh, wait. Let me actually change my dimension first. Let me, uh... Close that VTube Studio. Uh, you can see so much of this. There we go. Let me just... Is it getting me? There we go. Let me just angle myself properly. <laughs> Thank you again for the change for the change dimension redeem. There I am in three dimensions. But yeah, I could always use um. I never thought about it, but this would actually make a good um. Let me see if I have it here. You made this for me like so long ago. Uh, there it is. This one. I remember, like, a long time ago, I asked you for, like, the colored version of this, and it came out super well. But if you want to, then yes, of course, of course. I can't stop you from making things that you want to make. <laughs> but this actually, I don't know why I didn't think about it now, but this would make for an excellent, like, image to go along with my alerts. But let me just hide that. Yeah, it is so cute, isn't it? I love that picture. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Seer. <laughs> so what I want to do... I'm not going to do the whole sheet. But I want to... See if I can at least edit this here. This, this primed, ready-to-stab pose. Let's change it into stabbing with violence to stabbing with magic. Or magical violence instead of magical instead of stabbing violence. <laughs> Let's get up close and personal here. And then Actually no, this frame should be the same. And then the next frame. Yeah. The next frame will be the one where I actually get the hand on the heart pose. And then once I do that, I feel like it'll look really fancy. I think both these two will be good together, though. I think if I do these two back-to-back, -back, I'll have an idea of, like, how I want everything to flow together. Let's see. i put the head here. And then that replaces over here. Um, and then... I'm trying to think how the arm would look here. I think I might need to... Oh, I know what sprite I need to look at for this. Look at all the pixels just from far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that, too. Yeah, the, um, how I did the belts. I'm, I'm really happy with how the belts came out. Oh, I just realized there's a little bit of detail here. There we go. I'm happy with how, like, especially the body came out here. How I managed to get... I forgot to mention this change. Because Ellie Wood's, um, Ellie Wood's outfit is just a horizontal. It, like, goes across. It's, like, one piece. But as for, like, the way my 
my outfit looks. It has the whole, like, two Vs. I love how that came out as well. That was, like, really satisfying to get correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm doing is, um, I want to hack myself into one of the GBA Fire Emblem games, probably Fire Emblem 7, and I'm going to replace myself with one of the main characters and, like, see how differently the game would play, like, if the main character was a mage instead of an axe fighter or a sword fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you recall, um, there was a thing I made a while ago. Wait, let me share this. I think you might have seen it here, but I'm not sure if everyone here saw it, because I made it a while ago. Let me see. I'll add a new source. So, those edits that I made that looked like they took place in Fire Emblem. Let me also pause this. Um, let me open up this in Projects. Let me just show this video. It is, let me show video files. I made this a couple of... Oh, no, I'm probably not going to make a fan game. It's just going to be a ROM hack because I'm, like, really comfortable working with um the Effie Builder engine. I think it's just really nice to work with. Um, It was... Which one was it? Not Kill. Is it The Sun? I forget what I named it. Ah, uh, which one... I made one about killing the sun, and then I forget. Is it this one? Yes! I no, also love doing no, that! Deliberately one. misusing slang. Ooh, I one of my favorite teaching one. moments was when I... I don't know how many of you... Sorry about that. I can't... I don't see, like... Oh, wait, I can just set thumbnails. What am I doing? I'm being silly right now. Let me try that again with the thumbnails active here. All right, so small icons, medium icons. But I want to showcase the um, the hacking that I did. Because it was hacking. It wasn't just like me editing, like video editing. The whole thing happened that I built like in the Fire Emblem ROM itself. So where is it? I can't believe I don't remember what I named this. Is it not in my projects? Oh, it might not be in my projects. It might be in my videos folder. I might have cut it. That might be what it is. Uh, let's see if I can find this one. Let's see. It should be one of these. This is probably fine enough, actually. So you could see. There we go. So you could see here. This is all hacked into the game. Like the portrait appearing there. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I did a... I made some later ones where the actual, like, the mouth movement was there on the sprite. You can see that there's, like, a, a little bit of bad blinking. <laughs> but yeah, I want to make it so that, like, also the character is also me instead of just, like, a random Fire Emblem character. So that's the plan. And that was all hacked in the game itself. So that's sort of, like, where I'm going with this. So we want to make sure that... Yeah, so far so good. The portrait came out really well. I didn't make the portrait though. That was um a commission that I I found someone on Reddit who like did that this whole portrait. And it came out so well. I love the art style of uh GBA Fire Emblem. But yeah. I need to figure out how I want to uh, do the arms, like the arm over the heart pose. There are some characters that I can reference to, but I think I might save that for later. I think what I want to do now is actually I think I might do it in another window. I'm gonna open up image ready. And then I'll share with everyone to see like how it looks in um how it looks in that program. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm gonna combine the sprite with the portrait so that um like when you hover over my character, it's me in there. And um like in battle it'll be me visually. And I'm not gonna change the dialogue. That I'm not gonna do. <laughs> Doing the dialogue would be a little bit too much. Alright, so size should be... Okay. I feel like this is really... I can't even see the canvas here. But yeah, as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna keep talking because... I just really want to be able to showcase this. But I don't know... Why is this so small? I don't even understand how image ready works, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> GBA found this spot I'm playing... Yeah, it's just such a visually cool thing cool art style. 
Let me go back and forth in Photoshop. I'll just talk with everyone while I'm going through this. I at least want to see if I can showcase the uh, sprite animation. Because I want to see, I also want to see how it looks animated. I think it'll be really neat. So let me do this. Let me make a file of the appropriate size. And hopefully my computer doesn't explode trying to have image all these things open at once like image ready and Photoshop and everything. Image ready Photoshop paint VTube Studio VSF. <laughs> all these things are just open right now. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to make this a 50 by 50 canvas on Photoshop and we should be able to actually I think I could just do this in Photoshop itself let's see wait MS paints Reina I only know how to edit an MS paint please be kind to me I don't understand better I know nothing <laughs> I do not know anything it's just that's how we just live sometimes um <laughs> please I don't need to be ganged up on like this all right import export edit an image ready that's what it is all right so while I go through this you missed the uh, sprite editing part and I don't want to showcase the process of the painstaking process of me editing in an uh, image ready <laughs> it's just gonna be a lot so I'm just gonna chat while I while I do um the animation just so we can see how the sprite looks you will pay tell me I didn't even know a sprite wasn't free I'm gonna be honest <laughs> all right I don't understand how to use image ready I'm gonna be honest with you <gasps> wait this is so fascinating oh wait no it's showing me what it this uh, wait. okay 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 I got this I think I got this so I need to move one two one two I guess I could show the screen, you know? I think that should be fine. Let me... It's just because it, I don't think it looks as interesting, but you know what? I might as well. Window capture, add source. Let's see. Image ready. I don't want to, like, share my whole monitor because that's just asking for disaster. Uh, That's also asking for disaster. Nothing important was open. Haha. <laughs> No important windows were there. <laughs> Window capture. It's such a meme that uh, it does that. That Streamlabs. That Streamlabs is the first option in Window capture. So like, every image that you have open just shows. Oh, it showed Streamlabs, Adobe Image Ready, Ellie Sheet Whip, Adobe Photoshop, Groove Music, VC Face. If it was any lower, it would have shown that I had Polarium Play installed for Raid Shadow Legends when I was helping a friend do their Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> when they were doing their uh, sponsored stream, their push for it. <laughs> Here we go. Is this cut? No, this is fine. We can just show this here. So you can see how I'm going back and forth and like just layering everything. <laughs> there we go. There's the... Uh, there's image ready. I don't understand how to animate an image ready if I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, so then I think that should line up one back, yeah. Then we get this and then the next sprite in paint. I don't fully understand <laughs> how the shadows work in Fire Emblem sprite animations. So I'm gonna just go by the top of the hair. So it's gonna go like Boop. And then I think each layer should be this color. I don't know where the paint bucket is though. How is there no paint tool, paint bucket fill tool here? Image ready, why are you like this? How is this, how is this like dollar store Photoshop just like this? Reina, I don't know anything, please. You know what, I'm just gonna do this in Photoshop because I know you can convert to GIF in Photoshop and it's a lot more convenient that way. It's been a while since I've animated a sprite. I actually... A funny story about this, so... For me giving... <laughs> we can all have a little incompetency as a, as a treat. <laughs> Is it revenge? Maybe. It might be revenge. I can't... I also can't find my window now. 
Like, I opened a new Photoshop doc. Oh, there it is. Why is it focusing so weirdly? Holy moly. I am so lost right now. I'm closing out image ready. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, Reina. <laughs> I am maybe trying my best. It's been a while since I've done, like, image editing or GIF creation on Photoshop. But, uh, we're gonna do our best here. Let me op let me share Photoshop this time. Actually, I think I just have that as a... That should just be if I close out paint. Where is paint? Where's my paint window? There we go. <laughs> we have Photoshop. It'll be hard to go, like, back and forth through them each, so I'm just gonna go through this. And we'll put this here. And I have a plan on how I'm going to do this. <laughs> You're surprised you know how to use Photoshop? Yeah, I use Photoshop a lot, actually. A lot of my edits are made in Photoshop. And I actually talked about this a while, or a couple, like, when I started the stream, but... I don't know how many of you guys... I'm sure Reyna definitely has the era of, um forum signatures where you'd be on an internet forum and you'd have like a very edgy um like you know like you'd have like a cool anime character just like saying some edgy stuff that's what I did I made a lot of forum signatures in my spare time like I asked my mom for photoshop just so I could make like a cool signature on the internet and maybe one day I'll show my old like log of uh, forum signatures but they would be very incriminating pieces of information. Black 1px border, Reyna, you underestimate me. My borders on Photoshop are always like this. My Photoshop borders look like this. Edit, stroke, outline, inside, one pixel, one pixel, and then you do this again. Edit, stroke, outline, inside, one, but instead of black outline, it was white outline, and then you do it again, Stroke, outline, black. You see this? This was the peak of signature borders. And then you hit that with an overlay? Mm -mm -mm, that shit looked so nice! <laughs> that was the nicest looking signature border. I did that. Sometimes I would do like two, horiz two pixel horizontal black, two pixel horizontal white, then black. Sometimes I would do that. I got kind of creative with my signatures. It was like the only real creative pursuit I had in high school aside from music. <laughs> But I spent a lot of time making forum signatures, so that's where I learned a lot of Photoshop. I'm moving so fast! Yeah, I can- I can- I can crank out a shit post on Photoshop with relative ease. I don't use the saturation tool! I am exclusively an overlay, pin light, soft light, hard light kind of guy. Sometimes color burn, color dodge. Oh god, wait. That would be interesting. Because this is going so poorly. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do, everyone? You know what we're gonna do right now? Cause this Zatsudan's gone to hell and back. I've already, let me save my, let me save this work in progress sheet. What we're going to do, what we're we going to do right now? We are going to, oh, I'm so ready for this. I didn't think in a million years that this would be anything that I stream, but because I'm feeling the spur of the moment here. Oh baby, we're doing it. You see? It's rendered. It's rendered. It's all transparent. You see what we're doing? You know, you gotta be careful when you go to the forums. Each forum has their different rules, you know? Sometimes, sometimes the mods will take a bat to your kneecaps if your signature is above 150 pixels. So we're gonna be safe here. We're gonna make a 500 by 150 pixels. There we go, right? Right, 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 right. And so then, we're gonna take this picture of Elliot here. And then, we have this, right? Do you guys wanna see something? Do you wanna see my favorite way to make a shitty background first? It's like, sometimes you would use a brush tool, right? Sometimes you would use the brush tool to make your backgrounds. <sighs> no, we're gonna go a little bit bigger. Do we wanna, do we wanna rotate this? No, we don't want to rotate this. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. 
Now I'm a Fire Emblem character. <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna do it a modest size here, like that, right? Maybe a little bit. You just dump a bunch of textures. I know a lot of people went that route. I don't like using the textures. I use like a lot of like downloaded from DVR brushes. All right, so we got that. And then what I would do, let's drag another instance of this layer here. Why not do a triple banner with the boss offset and fancy off gray border? Ooh, a triple banner. I I did a couple of those where like I had a bunch of characters in the uh, in the picture, each revealing a. Oh my god, a PNG reveal, but it looks like a forum signature! <laughs> Woozle, you're a genius! <laughs> Alright, so what I would do... One of my techniques to make like a background would be like, do this. We hit Control j we hit Control j you get a bunch of different colors by doing this. Right? Right, 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 right. You just do that, and then you do, uh, you do this, and then you do this. And we just organize the layers in a different way so that we can get the most out of our appearance here. And we do control E a couple times. Right? So we have this. But then, but then you hit that shit. You go to filter, you hit blur, you hit Gaussian blur. Ooh. And we get that. And there's some other things you could do too. But like this serves as a base. Because a lot of the times when you just have the background, Things would, like, overlay pretty badly on it. You have mixed feelings about this. Don't worry, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, Seer. We then go to the brush tool. And I actually have a couple of forum signature brushes that I used a while back. I like this brush set a lot. This volcanic brush set. So, you know, we're gonna go with some purples here. Because, you know, purple's my color. So, we're gonna... We're gonna make uh, some background here. And we're gonna like overlay that, you know? Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> Does this count as commercial use? A lot of brushes say that they're not for commercial use. But like, if I'm doing it here, does that. Is this illegal? So. You gotta put the brushes here. I like how this is coming out already. I love this brush set. <laughs> So we do this. This is commercial. <laughs> it's com They'll never find me. I'm like a literal nobody. <laughs> so we get some of these at the start, and then we're gonna go some above, you know, just to blend it in a little bit. And we're gonna hit this one with a soft light. No, we're gonna do... Look at that. Security and obscurity, exactly. I may or may not have doxed my own Steam account at some point, but that video is deleted off the internet. And we change this color a little bit here. And then... Let's, uh... We don't want the brushes to all be the same uniform style, so we're also going to... Image... Where is it? Image Rotate Canvas. 90 degrees clockwise, so you know we get some, like... Oh wait, gotta make a new layer. You get like that... That... Mm, yes, delicious... Exactly, Reyna. That's how we made the- that's how we win the signature contests on the- on the forums, you know? They make the forum signature contests and you win by doing all this inane stuff. <laughs> and then this is gonna be... Let's see what- how do we want to do this one? Actually, I think this one should go below, Elliot. This should go one- go a little under me. And we could do... What's a good one? What's a good... What kind of like... I think, yeah, the dark is a good contrast. The simultaneously... <laughs> Are you getting flashbacks, Reyna? Are you remembering what it's like to be a, um... A... A boomer? <laughs> Wait, this sounds like such a fun idea for a stream, though. <laughs> Wait, I actually unironically want to do this. A forum signature stream where people send me their PNGs and I just make them forum signatures. <laughs> that sounds like such a fun stream to do. I'm just gonna download a bunch of brushes that are absolutely none of them are gonna be for commercial use. But, um. You know? We just let that slide by. And then we're gonna put on some, uh. I don't have a lot of brushes here. Make it a Twitter trend? Oh god, imagine? What should we call that? Like, VTuber Forum? <laughs> V 
VTuber Pro Boards. Can I make your 600 by 50 with within 3.39.98 KB and animated? I could make it animated, like five frames of animation of you just scuttling along, Woozle. I don't know if you're serious or joking, but I can absolutely do that. <laughs> right, this brush is like 2,000 something pixels big for some reason. Why? I know it's a cloud brush, but geez. And we do this, we do this. And this one we could do like... Oh, these... I don't like the visual effects here as much. Oh, this is nice. I like this. I like this one. Look at that. Tweet this, I'll make, I'll make one in reply. Yes, yes, we're gonna get this started. Oh, I gotta think of a good hashtag though. Like VTuber Pro Boards or like VTuber Forum. <laughs> and then, and then, and then we gotta do like something like, we are allowed to have horror content. Oh, I, have, I wish I had like vector brushes, like the arrow vector brushes that people used to use. I think I have tech brushes, but tech doesn't go with my aesthetic as much. Tech line brushes. Here's 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 the thing that I'm gonna do. We're gonna take a line or a rectangle. We're gonna take a rectangle, black rectangle. <laughs> v Pro boards, yes! Wait, that's so good. <laughs> Wait, that's overlay. I want to do this. Watch strategy in motion. All right, where's my transform controls? I want to rotate you. Oh wait, is it rasterizing it already? Wait, not this. V Pro Boards is a good one. Yes, yes, I <laughs> just fucking the idea of it's just so ridiculous. I can just do a line and make it have heavy weight. Let's say like pen pixel. We do this and then we just do like and we can make two lines parallel to it. So we gotta do like one of these, right? We gotta make the line there and then we gotta do that. And then we gotta do another one parallel, but, but as a graphic design student, <laughs> Seer, I apologize for this. There's probably like horror that I'm like showing you right now magic wand tool. We're not sampling. We're not sampling all layers. We're gonna do this. And then the parallel. <laughs> Graphic design is my passion, guys. <laughs> Good lord! <laughs> I'm so glad you can all witness what I do and how badly I do it. <laughs> but we have fun here. We have fun on stream sometimes. Let me zoom out. I'm pretty sure that lost all anti-aliasing. Holy moly, yeah, we're not using that line. We are just going to use those two lines there. Why does that keep on typing? Eh. Why does it think that I'm typing in Katakana or Hiragana right now? There we go, there we go. We put some of those little, like, black lines there as a, uh, a little, like, flourish, you know? I feel like you could put it a little lower, actually. And then I have, and then, like, the best part is, like, the fact that you have to put text at the, text on it, and the text is gonna be great. Does overlay not look that good? Show up that well here? Overlay does not show up very well. There we go. Just like a little bit, a little bit of salt line as a treat. <laughs> you want to write in do Well, I'll be honest here. These were all within the same like three year span for me. <laughs> it's looking not so bad though. Thank you. I'm glad that from your graphics design perspective that I made something that could look almost decent. <laughs> Needs more saturation. You mean like this? Let's hit the uh, photo filter. Let's hit the, uh, the violet filter. Density. That's not saturation. We hit it with the photo filter. And we hit it with, like, that shit right here. The overlay or the lighten. Oh, this looks terrible. The darken doesn't look too bad. It's not pro boards. 
Well, I was above pro boards. I actually didn't use pro board many pro boards forms. I was I was pretty big. Please get away from the saturation bar. <laughs> I apologize for my misdeeds. I was more of a envision free or PHP PB kind of forum guy, you know. Those were my kind of forums. You know, pro boards, pro boards were okay. Nice background. Thank you. I'm glad you think it came out well. <laughs> um so then what we got to do. Oh, like I said, you know, we have to have that border. You know, we got to do edit stroke outline one pix inside and then one with the white edit stroke outline. And then we do it again, edit stroke outline with the black. And if you see, we got a pretty nice, we got a pretty classy border here once we hit overlay. Look at that. Or soft light. I think soft light works better in this coloring here. Give us that border. <laughs> Let me see. Can I zoom? Can I enlarge in this? Can I embiggen it? Embiggen it. Let's adjust this right now. So you can see it in bigger color without me having to zoom in. Look at that. Look at that! Elliot Amber's forum signature. <laughs> and then we gotta type it in some nice font. That's the word, Reyna. I'm a teacher. I know this one. So the question is, do we use like a fancy looking like cursive font for this one? Or do I use like the Adult Swim font? Don't use Comic Sans or I'm gonna hit you. I've been like really fond of using the, the adult swim font for some reason on things. Like Elliot Ambers. <laughs> Papyrus! Like I actually unironically think the adult swim font looks kinda cool. <laughs> See, are we gonna deal fatal damage to Seer? Oh god! <laughs> Remember when Avatar the movie used Papyrus as its font? Remember? <laughs> Remember when they got away with it? One of the biggest grossing movies in the world got away with using Papyrus as its font? No, one ironically though. Someone with a better design sense than me, tell me if this is a good font or not. Wait. Where'd it go? H-E-L. There we go. I feel like it just looks kind of solid. And then we just hit it with like an overlay. Oh shit, that looks cool as hell! Now do I want it black or white? Which one overlays better? Oh shit, wait. We put it like here. You want it to be like a little faded. You want it to be like a little faded so it's like kind of hard to read. Like one above the other? You mean like half top is white, half top is black? That might be pretty interesting. So like, I would have to like duplicate the layer, I think. We'd have to duplicate the layer, rasterize both. Or one of this one would have to be a uh, black text. I've never tried that in my signature before. Black and white. Oh, I didn't know that soft lighting black on white just completely kills it. <laughs> Are you okay, Reyna? <laughs> Let's rasterize our layers now. Let me also just make a duplicate just in case. Rasterize type. And then we're going to make this John like this. Alright, so then we are going to delete that top half. I don't know what you mean by stroke. <laughs> what is stroke effect, Reyna? Please tell me. Don't tell me. I know what stroke is. It's what I'm giving you right now. Wait, this looks kind of fucking... This looks kind of sick, if not kind of shitty. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> I don't think it needs stroke, because when I think about the adult swim font, I don't think about it being outlined. Or like, I think about like, 
I think about it just being plain text on something. You know? <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Someone tell me what the most memorable thing that I've ever said is. I'm probably sure I have a lot of them. But you know, there's also this other thing that you do, right? So you make a new text layer, and then you type in like really tiny, like 6.7 point font, like, watch me be sick as hell. Um, watch this dies. I'm about to do the coolest shit here. Uh, holy shit, my brain is so big. I'm a literal god. No one can ever strike me down. All right. So like, we type it really small here, right? You know, you do this, you like put this flavor font here. And then you do it in like some like really small font, like you know, we'll choose like what is it, like high tower text. And can I I forget, can I decrease the line spacing even further? No one can <laughs> Wait, did I type that? Oh god. Thank you for catching my typos, cause I can't read this shit. <laughs> um, so what I would do here, but then you just do this. Get that shit there. High tower. <laughs> I'm glad I'm picking the right ones. Then you put that like over here. You know, you put it like over here. Like in a corner. Those eyes, you only see white dots. <laughs> and then should I make this black text? You want it to be like visible as like something on your screen. Yeah, you want it to be visible-ish. But then we like overlay it. And it adds a little bit of texture. Leaders of deciphering and grading handwritten essays have brought you to this moment. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel that like grading like kids' papers, you know? This really does take me back. Even like this, like if I were to um zoom in a bit, if I were to rasterize this layer, so I can edit it. What I would do also is, you know, you rasterize this, and then, oh god, I am gonna have to zoom in. Let me, let me zoom in and unambiguous the screen here. So, here we go. Give you guys some more of that visual here that I'm mucking around with. There we go. I am efficient, by the way. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I absolutely know what I'm doing. To a shockingly strong extent. Ain't no one ever expected me to know how to use Photoshop like this. It's like we're gonna have this over here, and then we're gonna like... We're gonna take this, and then we're gonna shove this down a couple pixels. Because you know, it looks more fancy when it's all condensed into one when it's all condensed into, like, low line spacing. Please don't tell me that there's an option to, uh, actually do this, like, by just, like, typing in, like, line spacing and non-existent. I only know how to do it this way because I don't have a brain. <laughs> what is the line spacing option and how can I save myself from doing this stupid-ass shit? <laughs> <laughs> You have news for me. Fascinating. Oh no! I know that it's supposed to have the same space between lines naturally. I want the space between the lines to be smaller is what I was going for. That's why I took each of these down by 3 pixels. I was wondering if there's a way to adjust like how much space to skip between a line. Is there a way to change that too? <laughs> Do I have to like change it to like one point font at the end of the line every time I hit a enter or something? <laughs> yes, I've been doing this kind of stuff and like just that's how I've been operating for uh 14 years. <laughs> that's how long I've been messing around. You hold control while typing the text. 
wait, 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 wait. What? 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 I hold control when typing. I'm so confused. Control while typing the text just gives me the control sh shortcuts like control S. Yeah, um, anyway, you guys can have your little magical things. I have my text in the corner here looking really fancy. Click on the text. Well, that's not a text layer anymore. That's been rasterized. Uh, <laughs> click on the text. Wait. Now hold control. I'm holding control. What's it doing? <laughs> look, look, look. I'm still operating on Photoshop CS2. I actually do have access to C uh, Creative Cloud, but uh, I it took me like three years to actually shift from a, it took me three years to shift from Photoshop Elements 5 to, drag the corners. Well, no, but that changes the size of the text. That changes the size of the text as well. I want the text to be the same size, but the space to be smaller. Oh, wait. I can do this shit, though! <gasps> Reyna, you absolute genius. I can have parallelogram font now. <laughs> Stop. The line spacing should have an M. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I like that I'm just like just mind breaking everyone by just not knowing how to use Photoshop correctly. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We're gonna zoom back out. We're gonna zoom back out. Line spacing is an option, just. Someone can just DM me. Someone can just DM me with the actual instructions, like after the stream. Because I think I'm going to. <laughs> Woozle, no, you don't have to do this. No, tags, mind break. I just want to go back to 2008 and have a good forum signature. I think I came out with it a little nice. And then we got to do like some blending tools to the render. We got to like duplicate this layer and then we're gonna hit this with the filter and then I'm gonna do a Gaussian blur because this is the only thing I know how to do and we Gaussian blur that one and I overlay and look at that look at that blending If she breathe she's a thought All women are queens Anakin Thought I remember that video Yeah, look at that I like I like the way that text looks overlaid like that. Like, slightly unreadable, but like, if you're looking close enough, you can read it. <laughs> Did I say something like that? I don't think I said that. <laughs> I think this might be a little too... too contrasted, though. Soft light doesn't look as good, though. And I don't think an ov I don't think an, an opacity lowering would look great. I think overlay looks fine actually. Look in the menus for text options. View layer. Where the fuck is text options? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Maybe some texture on the top layer. Yeah. 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 You might be right. I sent you an SS. Thank you, Seer. <laughs> probably, probably the most reasonable thing to do. Let's put some texture on the top. Let's, uh... Oh god, there's my layers. Could be like, type? Nah, there is no type button here. It's file, edit, image, layer, select, filter, view, window, help. <laughs> Unless it's clicking... No, type does not appear here either. I am sorry. <laughs> we have hit a wall. <laughs> let me let me put some cloud textures here. 
look for type or font or paragraph or I mean if I go to uh, T I can do horizontal type tool vertical type tool and horizontal and vertical masks masks character oh I found it <gasps> I found it <laughs> Let me just put some cloud textures here. Yes, I have found it. I will not use this at this point because I don't think I need to anymore. I, I already dealt with the text menace, but uh, that will be good to know for the future when I make more forum signatures for everyone. <laughs> Kill me. I will not use it now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to make more forum signatures. It's a, it was a hobby that I had for a while, and while I may not be good at it, it's fun. <laughs> Let's put a in between the overlay layer and the actual um, render layer. Let's put some more brushes here. Let me put some happy little clouds here, some purple clouds because that's all I know. Like I put this over here. That's some texture. Now that's texture. That's a little too bright, actually. Holy, holy mother of saturation! The point of Reina, I had standards. I have standards now, and I have stand had standards then. They weren't high, but <laughs> they were there. I think color dodge might be a little too thick. There we go. Dear Lord! <laughs> um, let's do that. And then... Let's do some textures over. Let's... <laughs> no! No, Seer! <laughs> oh, it feels like an arrow just pierced through my heart. <laughs> Feel like I've just been murdered on stream. <laughs> they all right, man. It just hit me like a truck. <laughs> no, that's too wide. It's too wide. So my problem when I did this kind of stuff here is that it would blend too deeply, and it would like. Wait, let me try this. Let's see, what if I did some inversion here by using the eraser tool? Pencil mode, not pencil mode. We don't want pencil mode. I always remember a lot of the critique that I had was on blending. You know, the blending could use a little work. The render seems kind of just placed in there. And I was like, you know what? Fine, I'm going to hit the magic wand. I'm going to hit not contiguous and click on a transparent spot. And then press control and then plus right click, and then feather. No, I would hit control shift I, then right click, feather a little bit, maybe like a four pixel radius, control shift I again, and mash that fucking delete button. How's that for blending, moron? <laughs> All right, Elliot Amber's forum signature. I think this is pretty good. I think, I think going from sprite editing to uh, making forum signatures, I think was a pretty good leap. I'm gonna save that. Add roses or bubbles? Oh, you know what I could add? Let me see if I have a brush for this. I feel like just using the shape tool would be almost too on the nose for uh, old forum signatures. Let's see what shapes we got. Objects. Can we get a card shape? No. There are no card shapes. Symbols? Animated- We're not going on fucking blingy, Reyna. We're not- we're not pulling out blingy.com. <laughs> ornaments. What's ornaments? <laughs> fucking blingy, dude. Blingy is a real treasure, like a real blast of the past. Wait, what if I do this? You put one of these things here. Maybe like, this kind of looks like a pit crew background if I'm gonna be honest. Like I put that behind me here. Lower it a little bit. And then overlay it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> this looks terrible, actually. Nothing for the background. Add a flower. Nature. Nature. I don't think any flower really represents me. I could put a wisteria leaf there, but I would have to find one on, like, planetrenders.com or something. We're just gonna stick with this. We're gonna save this right now. I'm gonna make a new folder in my streaming folder titled Forum Signatures. Not even putting it behind the- I, it was behind the text layer. It was actually the second lowest layer in the thing. It's just because of how the, uh, the overlay is, is that it looked like they were kind of just on top of each other. And, uh, I can't help that. That's just overlay. Overlay being overlay. Alright, and then we're gonna save this as Elliot.png. Elliot Sig. Elliot Siggy. Dot PNG. <laughs> Watch out. Welcome to Elliot Siggy Shop, where we make forum signatures and abbeys for you. <laughs> Alright. Well, there's there, that, and that was that. Um, so now let's go and find someone to raid. That was, that was an experience that, uh, holy shit. I don't know why I did that, but it was very nostalgic. <laughs> and now I want to make a whole stream out of making forum signatures. You're so asleep. <laughs> That's a real blast from the past now, ain't it? Yeah, you can redeem something, here. Feel free to. You have something that you want to redeem right up, right at the end. What is it that you would like to redeem? What? I accidentally hit my microphone. Let's see, whilst I look for the rating target, let's make it a trend. I, I want to make it a trend, or at least like share it and send everyone back to the past. And thank you for stopping by Action Production. Oh, yes, your debut tomorrow. At 1 p.m. EST. Let's see. But just how... So you mean like how your debut will go or how um how your streaming will go after the debut? How do you want me to read that? Just so I have a clear idea of what I'm reading for. shuffle these cards. I don't know if you get the good card slapping ASMR now compared to before, since I have a mic arm. We'll stay here for the raid. Good. So we're gonna do this fortune reading first. We're gonna do a tarot reading. Just for Seer. In preparation for his debut tomorrow. Oh, and the debut. And that point as a new artist 100% Seer. Alright, alright, alright. So how you will grow as an artist and how you will debut tomorrow. We'll focus on those things. Let me just shuffle this deck a bit. And we'll lay out the cards. And it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. They can be redeemed at any time. I always like doing fortune readings. I feel like a lot of people don't redeem them though. I wonder if it's because like they don't want to interrupt what it is that I'm doing or something. Which I totally get. It could be kind of weird to like just throw it in there and like have it like sort of like if I'm playing a game some people might find it weird but I enjoy doing these I like it was like one of the things I wanted to do a lot of when I first became a streamer but uh I feel like it doesn't get a lot of a uh, use and I don't like doing uh I don't always do like tarot streams re frequently because I feel like the few times I have done them and it doesn't feel like <laughs> I got a lot of questions asked excuse me streamer could you stop everything Understandable, understandable, but I feel like even during like Zoxidons and like tarot dedicated streams Mostly I feel like redeeming it. No, it's understandable. Usually I save them for the end at the very least So Anyway right. So like I do these with the medium readings we're gonna read we're gonna interpret the cards as the um We're gonna interpret the cards uh each of the three cards first, the first three cards, and then their crosses. So well, let me get this card here. This is not the actual card. The card that we have is the... Let me flip this 180 degrees. 
rotate, and then transform, rotate. Eh, not the right rotation, 180 degrees. There we go. So the first card that we have here is the is the Five of Pentacles, and you can see it looks it shows two people disheveled, like running, walking through the um, like outside of a church in front of that stained glass building. So it usually this card represents like some kind of hardship, some kind of like going through some sort of turmoil that like had put you in a really bad spot, had put you in a spot where like you were struggling just to get by. Whether that be like physically or like emotionally, like pulling through with what you were doing was just something that was like very daunting. Is what it tells me like the past was just like there was some very insurmountable task or a task that really just kicked you down a lot, is what we have experienced. And the present. So the present, what we have here, or like the near future, I should say, even the present or what to expect tomorrow. Properties. Let's put this card here. We have. That is the. Let me find the number here. So let's make that visible. My waifu and fire emblem as a reading. I don't think I need a fortune reading to do that. I know who my waifu is. <laughs> so what we have here is the six of cups, but not just the six of cups. The six of cups in reverse. So the Six of Cups usually represents the sort of like the idea of giving, you know, you could see on the right side of version, it's someone presenting to someone a chalice, you know, in that case, it could be a representative similar to like, you know, putting yourself out there for debut, presenting what it is, what you've been working on with everyone, but upside down, it might just show that you have like some reservations about the debut, that there might be some things that you're hesitant, that you're, you might not be sure it's ready, or you might not be confident in. So it might be showing that for tomorrow's debut that, you know, there's things that you might be worried about not going as well as you want them to, or things that you worked on that you might have had a plan, but maybe the plan for what you were working on might not be working out the way you wanted it to. And then the next card. Let me just rearrange this a little bit more neater. Card four, where did I put that over here? The next card, the last card, just of the main influence are properties. Huh. This is the same exact card that was in this position the last time I read this. The two of cups in reverse. So what this can tell for the future, what this can speak for the future is that it's supposed to be a card that represents unity card that represents like maybe like working with someone and maybe it means that with the debut maybe it means that there's a lot of like solo action that you're going to be focusing on focusing maybe maybe less collaborative and more just putting the spotlight on yourself so it seems like it'll be a very you centered day which does make sense because you know it's your debut so maybe some people Maybe there were like plans you might have like wanted to make with other make with other people. Maybe like there were some people you might wanted to like work with for your debut, but then as you go through this, maybe you thought that it would be better for you to just go on your own. And the past here. Get this next card here. And let's talk about the influences on these cards. So we can see that this card, the debut, shows that there's been a lot of struggle. And through that, that you have a lot of uncertainty with what it is that you're doing. And maybe it had to do with, like, taking on a lot on your own to be the cause of that. That might be what... I think that's what I'm, like, sort of getting from this here. So next. Next card that we have is the... Let's rotate this. Transform. Rotate 180 degrees. We have the Page of Cups in reverse. <laughs> so, again, the court cards can usually represent some kind of a person, some kind of, not necessarily like just an idea, but also maybe some sort of figure influencing you. So what the Six of Cups could be, Cups are usually more related to emotional energy, spiritual energy. So seeing the Page of Cups, 
it might have to do with that that sort of hardship, that sort of like difficulty in what you were doing came about due to maybe there was someone you were discussing with, maybe with N, about how you tried to ground these ideas, these thoughts into a more realistic view that like maybe you were too scared to go like as abstract as possible and like maybe there are some things that you were afraid wouldn't work as well like yeah you might have to like reel in like the eccentricity or like the creativity of it because you thought it might not be as appealing because the page of cups normally represents someone with a lot of creative energy and a lot of like ideas but reverse it might represent a stifling of those ideas so it might be representing that if the past if those hardships are there and they're represented by someone in reverse, then it might have been that just the fear of things not being accepted might have been what stopped you from going full on in what you wanted to do. Now the present. Ah. Let's see. This card here, properties. We have the We have the tower. But it's the tower in... Do this. It's the tower in reverse. So we have the tower in reverse here. As you know, the tower is usually representative of a time of, like, hubris, a time of, like, things changing, a very drastic impact. Usually it's seen as a negative card. But with this being in reverse, it might mean that... As your debut goes on, those reservations you have, maybe the overthinking them, right? That you overthought them. It might mean that like there's gonna be realizations that you'll make that what you're worried about isn't a big deal. That like maybe maybe you're afraid that the ideas won't go wrong. Or won't go the way you want them to. But I think the tower in reverse here, the influence here is that. There may have been things that went wrong when you tried to do things in the past, but it doesn't mean things are going to go wrong again when you try them. Or like, just the idea that the fear of like other failures or fear of other like disasters, like influencing like how you feel about the, the debut, it's just something that you might have to break through, like just push through because, you know, it's your debut, it's your day, it's your plans. And maybe it's just telling you to just go for it. Lastly, we have... Huh. I believe this card has come up in a reading for you before. We have the... This one is right side up. We end this with... Seven of Swords. And the Seven of Swords, you can see it represents a man who is sort of like running away. He's just taking a victory from, you can see in the background, there's that like sort of encampment. I think it represents a sort of like mischief, a little bit of trickery, like a fun, lighthearted like prank, you know? I think what it shows is that there's a lot of things that maybe you wanted to, that could have been done working with other people in the future. But I think a lot of it might be that you want to keep things under wraps. You know, there's a lot of secrets that you want to keep, a lot of surprises that you want to be able to reveal. So I think it shows that either as the debut goes on or as your streaming goes on, that or your art even, that there's a lot of surprises that you have in store that maybe you think it's best that you keep things a secret rather than work, reach out to other people because you want to be surprising to them, you know? You want everyone to be able to marvel in what it is that you do. So that's how I see it, you know? So in the past there were like, it's that stifling of that creative thought. And as your debut goes through, as you go through with your debut, that you just, maybe you'll have to, you'll make, come to some realization or maybe you'll like slide into how everything goes and push through, through with some things that you weren't sure if you were gonna be able to do or not, you know? So maybe some gags that you were gonna do or some things that you were gonna talk about that you weren't sure you are gonna talk about. And moving forward, Maybe there are some more surprises that you're going to keep secret. Some things that you just don't want to reveal just yet, don't want to let people in on because, you know, 
when you reveal it, it's going to be a big surprise to everyone. But that's the reading that I get. And Action Productions, if you're still here to uh, answer your question, my waifu and fire emblem is Sarah. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed the reading. And now, unless anyone else has any other last minute readings, or anything else they want to redeem, then we'll go ahead and the raid target. Thank you everyone for showing up. I hope you enjoyed, if you were here for the spriting, the sprites, if you're here for the impromptu form signature creation, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you were able to enjoy the reading. I'm always happy to do readings for people if they so choose to have their readings done. I think it's just nice to do. So, let's see, who can we raid? Thank you so much. That's fine. <laughs> you hope to see... Well, maybe it'll be... Hopefully the future art streams will be more like the spriting and less like the uh, the graphics art, graphic design train wreck. But I do want to actually do those like graphics art streams still. My wife, who is Sarah from Fire Emblem 7. Alright. So let's go and raid. Oh, I was thinking about raiding Shady. Yeah, he's doing karaoke right now. And I love me a good karaoke stream. So Shady this channel. So if you want to hear Avoid Spawn, Belt Out to Queen, and some other great hits, then join us for the raid. Thank you for stopping by everyone again, and have a great rest of your night. Class is dismissed.